Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, I wonder what it's like to be a superhero. That was my Rob Thomas impression. Did you like it? Did you like it? No? Oh. Well, welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast, FF episode 1543, 1543. Today we hear from Adam Rudebega, Valentino, Bison, Bentley, my friend. Last night I went to bed at 6 30. Mike's Daily Podcast. It was glorious. It was wonderful. When I laid down, every muscle in my body was aching. Mike's Daily Podcast. I think I had a little food poisoning, and so my life was crap. And then I decided to take a long nap. And when I woke up this morning around 3 30 a.m., I was happy and feeling normal again ish. And I'd like to thank my dog, the wonderful Basil the Boxer, because Mike's Daily Podcast. He let me sleep. He let me sleep that whole time. He slept right next to me in his little bed, and Mike's ah, I was good. Daily a good long sleep. Podcast. And you know, like it was, yeah, never leaving the bed type sleep. I for some reason didn't have to use the bathroom or anything. I just slept through the whole night. I was like total Sleeping Beauty. It was wonderful, and I, I must have had something. You know, when you. Get that sickness type thing and then you're sleeping away. Where's my snoring sound effect? Yeah. Look who just walked in just now then, therefore. Hello! Character that just walked in. Hello, Michael Meister. It's Madame Ruta Vega. Haven't you slept a long time? Yes, it's almost like I ate an apple and it made me fall asleep forever. Well, Michael Master, that's an amazing thing. You like to eat apples, too. Ooh. I know. I'm wondering if... Because I bought some food at Grocery Outlet. That's what we have here in the Bay Area. Look who else walked in. Speaking of the Bay Area, you know, people drive like crap here. I've mentioned that before. Today, I'm driving down Center Street in Podcastro Valley. I'm driving down Center Street and... a Scary, scary Center Street. At four in the morning And a guy comes up right behind me And sits on my butt You're only supposed to go 25 miles per hour on this street Right? So I obey the speed limit He sits on my butt For about 30 seconds And then totally And here's today's podcast picture Crosses a solid yellow line In a residential district And goes around me and goes around me like you slow poke. No, the, the the speed limit is 20. Jeez. What an idiot. That's what that guy's headed for. Ah, oh. but yeah, I love the Bay Area and the crappy drivers. It's wonderful. Podcast picture speaking of the Bay Area, San Francisco, Aquatic Park. Hey, have you been to Aquatic Park? That's where that woman got bit by a sea lion recently. But I was there recently. On a Saturday, I took a t- I took a day off from my weekend job, and I went over there and I I aquatic park, and the sun was setting and it was this beautiful pinkish hue in the sky, and you can kind of see off in the background the Golden Gate Bridge, but that's aquatic park, and it was so neat that I like that. Sometimes going to San Francisco. Sometimes I'm really happy to live so close to San Francisco and popping over there. That was the, that was the day after I went to this, I went over to the Ghirardelli Square and this one girl shoved a bunch of chocolates in my pocket. And uh, I found out later she didn't work for Ghirardelli and she was a shoplifter and she told me to run. Have you ever had a shoplifter put a bunch of chocolates in your pocket and then you go, my name is Tom Papa and I'm on the Prairie Home Companion show that's not called Prairie Home Companion anymore with Chris Dilley? And then you go, what the hell is Mike talking about? On my way to my weekend job on Sundays, I listen to what used to be Garrison Keillor's uh, Prairie Home Companion. It's called something else now. I, it's like live from here, I think is what it is, or from here or... In this area or right up from this spot Something to that effect It's it's very like a name they scrambled to give it They had to change the name from Prairie Home Companion Because Garrison Keillor touched a woman's back And apparently that's verboten in today's society 
So do not ever, men, ever touch a woman's back. Ever. It's evil. You're an evil person. And Catriona Perry is a, a lovely blonde, apparently, is an author and is on C-SPAN at this moment. Just so you know. So the, I got a text yesterday. Uh, I used to do this thing. Uh, emails from email. And you're spent. Common, not so comments. I used to do that little. I'm not gonna play that today. I just, I'm, I'm not in the mood. So, Stormy Phoenix got mad at me because she's like, "Hey, I heard you talk about me on your podcast, and I am not your mean millennial friend. How dare you?" And she's right. She is not my mean. She's the nicest millennial friend I have. And I know I probably just defended another millennial friend I have, but no, Stormy Phoenix is awesome. I can't say enough nice things about her, so I don't know how that... It, uh, something spiraled out of control. But we made up and all is well. We do both know a fellow millennial who is very mean. Very mean and says very ageist things and then gets mad because she is from a... I think a white father and an Asian mother. And so she gets mad if anybody says anything about Asians... She gets mad about the Asian culture being depicted. She gets mad about everything. So I, you you get called racist by her regularly, and I don't like that about this uh, millennial friend that this millennial nice millennial friend and I have. San Francisco is a very multicultural place, and it will always be multicultural, and I love it. And, and when I lived in Alabama, which is not quite so multicultural. And came to San Francisco and California. It was like a wonderful break. And it was wonderful. It was just enlightening. And I knew I had to move here. And I had the opportunity in 2009. And I've been here ever since. But I do hate the Bay Area driving. It's terrible. People drive. They, like, they, they're, the rules don't apply. And I actually audibly cheered when I heard a motorcycle cop who was parked on Center Street in Podcaster Valley waiting for people. There was a stop sign, a four-way stop sign, and people tend to fly right through the stop sign. In fact, I know the person who got the stop sign put in, they, a longtime Podcaster Valley resident. She, put the, she was able to petition and get the sign put in. So there's this... Motorcycle cop that was waiting for people to fly through it, and sure enough, someone did. And I heard him go woo because I was already walking past this point, and woo, and that, I don't know why he was making that sound. Woo. Oh, that was his motorcycle making that sound. <sighs> that explains it. So, yeah, he pulled someone over. I was so happy. I was yes, just totally get that guy. For flying through that stop sign. My point being that I don't understand this though. We have a very lo- the tattoo artists in the Bay Area are so busy. They get so much work because a lot of millennials they want to have tattoos all over their bodies, and I don't understand it. And what I do not understand is the tattoo on the collarbone. That's crazy. In fact, I was listening. To NPR over the weekend on Saturday or Sunday. Sunday is my big NPR day, and I listened to Lulu Garcia Navarro. And Lulu was talking to someone who had was part of the uh, women's march uh, the year previous, and they were getting caught up on what do you think about women's marches? Are you going to participate in the women's march, which was on Saturday? But the, you know, just what do you think about it? And she said, you know, I'm not going to do the Women's March anymore because I don't think we really have the same values we used to have. And But you know what I got? I got a very feminist slogan tattooed on my collarbone so that when my daughter grows up, she'll see that I'm a, I'm a feminist. And I was, what? Say what? I was, what? you got to be kidding me. And... You've got to be kidding me. Wow. 
Wow. People get tattoos like they don't real they don't realize it's permanent. I don't know, maybe our society has no permanency feeling to it anymore. And so you just do things cuz you know it's it's not going to you're not going to have repercussions. You're not going to have to pay the piper down the road. And there's a lot of that philosophy going on today. Of just oh, I'll do something really ridiculously dumb. I'll tattoo, I'll pierce this, I'll do that and I won't have to pay for the, pay the repercussions later in my life and go, oh, what a mistake. Oh, that's what the laser removal kit is for. That's not. Everyone I've talked to that's ever done that says don't ever do that. It's the worst thing. But Basil's a drill sergeant. Did I mention my dog yesterday? As I am trying to work through this food poisoning or, or whatever I had yesterday... And I'm so tired and so lethargic. I just, oh, my body's just aching every step. And he wants to take a walk. And we're walking, and I and I want to turn. I want to make the turn that'll take us back home. And he looks at me like, "No, we're going this way." This dog gave me that face. He conveyed that message to me. My dog did that to me. And he is a drill sergeant. And by the time we, we climbed up this hill, I was in so much pain. I said, that's it. I'm going straight to bed at 630. And he was cool about it. And he, he slept the whole night, too. But, oh, he could be. And this was the same thing when my foot was all messed up. And every step was pain. It felt like a knife being driven through my foot. And he kept looking at me. And like, Let's keep going. Come on. Dogs. Dogs are just they're Drill sergeants But hey Collar Collarbone Dog collar That's what I'm gonna call Today's show Collar Hey so People The other thing that Mess uh, the, the The Bay Area drivers Are Are nuts They're crazy They They can't drive For Bleep But The worse Worser And I know that's Bad grammar But worsering The most Of all of the drivers in the Bay Area is anyone driving a white van. I'm talking the white vans that look like the kind that were in the A team. Da 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 da. And B.A. Bravis. B.A. Bravis played by the one inimitable uh, Mr. T, who would say things like, Where the hell is my Mr. T? Oh my gosh. What are you talking about, fool? There he is. Are you crazy? That's right. No way, fool. No, fool. No, fool. No, fool. No, fool. No, fool. That was my Mr. T. So, yeah. The white vans. And then some of the white vans have the really tall top. Because they make them narrow, but then really high. Really tall. So they can cram as much crap in there as possible. And it's all because of our Amazon culture. We're ordering everything online. I've done it myself. I have a couple of hats. that. I, if it's, speaking of collars... Well, I, I'm always wearing, as you, as you see in the last podcast picture, I had on a little cap, which is a new cap that uh, I got online. And I really like ordering my caps online because you can get great deals. And they've never been worn by anyone, supposedly, versus the ones you go in the store and everyone's put them on their greasy heads. And that's disgusting and weird and scary. But the... Uh, dog collar that I got I got two new dog collars for Basil the Boxer And speaking of collars And I got those online too But the, the they, dr- they drive so bad And they cut in front of you And they park illegally And they put Everybody else's life in danger They are terrible So maybe this drone thing Is the smart way to go That Mr. Bezos wants to do the drones. Where's my drone sound effect? I don't have a drone sound effect anymore. Someone took it out. Aw, oh, man. Well. <sighs> right. Sorry, I'm in a moment of depression. Oh, here it is. There we go. Much better. Yeah, so the- that's how our- all our stuff will get to us through these drones. Zipping around Cause I can't stand these jerk off White van drivers Um they Okay so To to wrap up Uh Saturday 
I'm about ready to take Basil the Boxer for a walk. And I have the I have this door that has a screen. It's one of those screen metal doors that that locks, that bolts. It's like you can't get through it because you need that in the Bay Area because it's it's a little bit scary sometimes and you don't want anyone breaking in your place. So I'm sitting there and I've got I'm getting ready to go walking Basil. I'm putting on his collar and everything back to the collar reference and suddenly I hear this vehicle pull up and stop and I hear the door slam someone getting out of their car and then I hear these feet coming up to the house and then Basil immediately that sets him off and he starts barking away and then then uh, I hear the door slam again and then I hear the, the engine start and I have an engine starting sound effect that I'd like to play for you at this time. I hope you enjoy it. It sounds a little something like this. Okay, so then this van starts and just as the driver is about to pull away, he rolls down his window and I hear him say, you're welcome. And then he drives away. What? What kind of, let's see, uh, how do we say, Richardish move is that I what did I offend you in some way because my dog was barking he did the, the total you're welcome like like I was supposed to tip him or something it wasn't he was dropping stuff off for my roommate <sighs> gosh I I really despise the delivery people now you might have a job doing that and the the fact is more and more of you will have a job doing that because that is our culture that's our society that's the direction our lives are heading is more and more delivery people but damn there was no reason for that hey today as i get to the news stories is my divorce day yes it was on this date uh 5 years ago 4 years ago 5 years ago yeah 5 years ago Wow, five years ago, the anniversary of when uh, my wife and I decided we're going to get uh, divorced. Yeah, so what a happy day today is. Woohoo! Love it. <laughs> so I just thought I'd share that with you. Today's divorce day, or D day. And it is a fact that more divorces happen in January than any other month. So that I guess that was. Part of the statistics. Woohoo. Divorce day. January 24th. Okay. On to something happier. How about the supermoon, blue moon, and lunar eclipse all coming to a sky near you next week? Sky watchers will get a rare glimpse. And this music will play. We'll get a rare a triple treat. January 31st, a supermoon, a blue moon, and a total lunar eclipse of the heart. Dun, 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 dun. How rare is this event? Even without the supermoon, it's the blue moon, total lunar eclipse. And it's the first of that since in the U.S. since March of 1866, less than a year after the Civil War ended. Yes, that long ago. A blue moon, which occurs uh, every two and a half years, is another term for the second full moon in a singular calendar month. January's first full moon occurred January 1st. Though the exact moment of this full moon is going to be, it's the 8.37 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon will appear plenty full for a day or two before and after that. However, the moon does not actually appear blue. As for the total lunar eclipse, it will be visible early in the morning of January 31st from Western North America across the Pacific to Eastern Asia. In the United States, the best view of the eclipse will be along the West Coast. Yay! For sky watchers in the Central and Eastern U.S., only a partial eclipse will be visible since the moon will set before totality. The lunar eclipse on January 31st will be visible during moonset. Ah, folks in the eastern United States where the eclipse will be partial will have to get up in the morning to see it. The eclipse will last almost three and a half hours from the beginning of the partial phase at 348 Pacific time. Hey, that's about the time I get up in the morning. Woohoo! 
I'll get to watch that uh, until it ends at 7.12 Pacific time. All right. That's happening January 31st. Get down. Get on it. The full moon will take on a dark reddish appearance during the eclipse. So another phase used to describe it is a blood moon. That's another phrase for it. Adding to the naming confusion, this full moon was also known as the snow moon by some Native American tribes. Finally, a supermoon occurs when the full moon is at the closest point of its orbit to the Earth, which is also called the perigee. That makes the moon look extra close and extra bright, up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter than a full moon at its farthest point from the Earth, known as the apogee. Now... Armando Iannucci's The Death of Stalin was pulled in Russia by authorities. Yes. The, uh, it was criticized by Russian authorities. The film was due to be released in Russia theaters this week by a local distributor, Volga Film, after it received an 18 plus certificate. However, follow, following an advanced screening, the culture ministry withdrew the certificate. So there is censorship in Russia. Who knew? The movie depicts the chaos of the regime after Stalin's death in 1953 and 30 years of iron-fisted rule and is an adaptation of Fabian Nuri's graphic novel. On to Schumer, who apparently, Senator Schumer, has rescinded the offer to Trump on the border wall funding. Hopes for a fresh start on immigration slammed into political reality yesterday as the Senate's top Democrat said. He had rescinded an offer to Trump on the border wall and the White House called an emergency bipartisan compromise dead on arrival. Uh, Charles Schumer said he had withdrawn an offer to Trump of $25 billion for new border security measures in exchange for permanent legal protections for some undocumented documented immigrants brought to the country as children. And back to space, the NASA spacecraft will get closer to the sun than anything ever before. Shortly after NASA was established in 1958, top scientists compiled a list of missions they thought the brand new space agency should pursue. The proposals were heady, considering at that point only three satellites had ever been launched. Researchers suggested an Earth-orbiting telescope that could detect the universe's most distant stars. With time, though, each of these dreams became a reality. It took decades for the technology to protect scientific equipment from the sun's ferocious race to be invented. Now, on a recent morning, a spacecraft not unlike the one envisioned in the 1958 uh, early days sat in a sterile room that uh, it's going to go. After 60 years of advances in science technology, this craft will probe our stars, our sun's mysteries, and monitor behavior that could affect everyone on Earth. We will finally touch the sun, said Nicola Fox, the missions project scientist. How cool. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. From the moon to the sun. Well, I have to wrap up the show, but thank you for joining me on my divorce day. I hope your collar feels good. Your collarbone, that is. And don't tattoo it. Leave it. A woman's... If you're a woman... I... I'm, I'm nuts about collarbones, so to cover that up with ink just is a travesty to me. And a tragedy. But let's just move on and do what you want to do, whatever. Next show, it's going to be Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Foreman, and John Deere the Engineer. Thanks for listening. Here comes the sun. Do, do, do. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye.